Now, yes, I know this isn't sailing, but there's a strong similarity between what goes on up in the air and what's happening aboard some of the most advanced boats in our sport. Now, cross-country gliding happens to be my other passion, aside from sailing. And it's starting to become pretty clear that the two sports are getting closer and closer. Is, is that modern high performance sailing machines like the America's Cup boats, Sail GP boats, they're all sailing at speeds at sort of 40 or 50 knots and they're getting very, very close indeed to this territory. We're cruising along here at uh, 75 knots, I'll just show you that. And that's a sort of medium quick pace we can slow right down to 45 knots which is well inside the sailing territory so it's really not that surprising that actually a lot of the sailors of these high performance machines are starting to look to flying for some of the answers and that includes both the technical side with the wing sections the flaps the transition phases between different wing configurations and indeed the way that you handle them. Never has high performance sailing been quite so close to flying. In the America's Cup world, it starts with the sail itself. On the previous generation AC45 Cats, it was a solid wing. Now aboard the AC75s, it's a twin skinned soft sail that forms a wing section. Dan Bernasconi, who was one of the key architects of the New America's Cup class, explains. A sail is effectively a wing that stands vertically. So instead of just a single mainsail that a conventional yacht has, we've got a twin or double skinned mainsail, which gives a really efficient aerodynamic section. If you took a cut through that, it would look like a D section at the front with the two skins coming off, much the same as an aircraft wing. On the other side of the equation are the hydrofoils. Aboard cup boats, they're sophisticated foils that can be raised or lowered in and out of the water. Under the glass rules, only one foil is allowed to be in the water other than during manoeuvres. The canting system is similar in concept to that used on the Amoka 60 boats. A battery-powered hydraulic power unit drives the rams that raise and lower the foiling arm. The arms are supplied items common to all four teams, but the wings on the end are designed by the teams, and it's here where some of the key development work is taking place. Foils could well be the area which decides the next America's Cup. The principles which allow an AC-75 yacht to foil are, are basically the same principles that allows an aeroplane to stay in the air. So we've got an airfoil section um, on the foils, which is uh, roughly the same cross-sectional shape as an aircraft wing, and the flow over the top of those foils is, is faster than the flow underneath due to the, the geometry of the section shape. That creates more pressure underneath, which lifts the, the seven and a half tons of the, the yacht and her crew. Unlike the previous AC-45 foils and indeed the rules governing the Amoka 60s, the new cup boats are allowed trailing edge flaps that can vary the amount of lift and drag that the foils develop. So for the foils we decided to allow flaps uh, on their trailing edges which are much the same as ailerons or, or flaps on a aircraft which uh, can rotate to control the amount of lift but ultimately it allows you more precise control of the lift and therefore the ability to fly. But these differences are going to be really hard, if not impossible, to spot. 
So what can we see and how different are the team's boats? Uh, one of the biggest differences I think we've seen thus far is the differences in, in hull design. That's probably the most largely talked about item um, of the four boats that are out on the water at the moment. Um, every team has taken a slightly different approach to the same problem. So I would say there's on one side um, American Magic and Ineos. They have uh, pretty flat hulls. And then there's Team New Zealand and us. We have uh, these hulls with a hump at the bottom. That shows that uh, we had quite different ideas on how the boats will be sailed. One of the fundamental decisions you've got to make is, is whether the crew are going to transfer from windward to leeward uh, through a tack or a jibe. It's a really interesting uh, sort of design trade-off there of, of whether you, you move the crew or keep them fixed. We'll find out who, who's got it right and who's got it wrong.